Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we wanted to talk briefly about some upcoming changes to Linux Mint 21.2. This is going to be the next point release for Linux Mint, the version based on Ubuntu. And this is slated to be released around June of 2023. So right now, as I'm recording this video, it is late February. Actually, it's the last day of February. So we have about three months going back and forth. Of course, every month, Month, there is a release from uh, Clem, the maintainer of Linux Mint. And uh, what I wanted to do is cover what is going to be in this update. Now, I will say that uh, this uh, this upcoming version is not going to be a massive groundbreaking thing. There are going to be a few good changes under the hood, and most of the changes are going to deal with the Warpinator client instead. So let's go ahead and jump on over into the article from the Linux Mint blog. This one was just released today. So uh, what they're doing is they're basically the the major issues are doing here is minor support to how the system behaves mostly on desktop changes. I'm actually a little excited about a few of these because the one thing I have had issues with is thumbnail support. Now the uh, the 21.1 uh, 21 actually allegedly fixed that. I'm still on 20.3. Uh, I've not upgraded yet. Maybe eventually I'll give that the full upgrade a try so that we can go ahead and see what happens. But what they are doing is in Nemo 5.8 they're going to use multi-threaded thumbnails. This is going to cause a little bit of a spike in CPU usage, but it's going to load thumbnails a lot better. So currently, as thumbnails are updated on an open directory, it updates them one at a time. So you'll see the thumbnail boom, 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 boom. You'll see that happening. What they're doing now is multi-threading, so it's going to do a certain number of them at the same time. They didn't give us the exact amount, but what it's going to do is while well, there will be a small spike in CPU and probably power usage uh, accompanying that, it's going to do a much better job of loading the thumbnails across all of the directories way faster. So we're going to get a lot better. So they've already improved the thumbnail support. Now they're improving it even better. The next thing they're going to do is the JavaScript interpreter is going to make a big jump uh, because of the Spider Monkey version. Currently, they're using 78, and there has been a lot of releases in between. The new upgrade is going to allow them to use all the new features in 102, which is going to give a lot better and a smoother and a more optimized overall experience. And then the last thing that they are doing is going to be working on support for better flat pack. Uh, um, um, uh, integration. So they're going to be doing XDG desktop portal implementations for Cinnamon, Mate, and XFCE. Usually uh, these are the types of things you see for GNOME, but we have their core three desktops. So sorry if you're using one of the other desktops and you uh, install extra desktops on top of it, which is not officially supported anyway. But if you are using Cinnamon, Mate, and XFCE, then you are going to have a much better uh, flat pack experience. So so better compatibility between desktop environments and non-native applications such as flat packs or lib Adwaita apps. Um, and among other things, it will make the uh, these apps to take screenshots uh, or support better support dark mode. The next big focus, the huge focus, I'd say the biggest focus of this is on Warpinator. Now, they created Warpinator as a means to share files easily between everybody on a network, which was a great idea. The problem is it completely took off and took on a life of its own. So much so, we got Warpinator clients for Android. We have, uh, I think we have Windows ones. It is available as a flat pack. It is available across uh, multiple different things. I believe it's actually in the in the AUR, if not the community um, packages and Arch. Warpinator blew up. The problem is, since it was created as kind of a small Linux Mint to Linux Mint thing, it had a few different security holes, and the SUSE security team looked at it and said, yeah, we've actually noticed a few bugs. They reached out behind the scenes to, to Clem and the others on the Linux Mint guys, and they're like, oh, yeah, we absolutely see that. So they fixed uh, some security bugs. 
uh, CEV uh, 2022 uh, 42725, all fixed to prevent files from potentially being written outside of the download directory. Now, eventually what they're going to do is make sure that nothing can be written anywhere except one isolated directory. But then the other thing that they are adding is they are adding communi um, encrypted communication. This is for instances where you start Warpinator on system boot or you run Warpinator as a long-term application, not your turning it on really quick, square shopping us file and then shutting it down. So in the case where it's being used in more of like a corporate area, then what you're going to do is everyone's going to assign a computer group. And so the computer group has to be set up and there's actually going to be um, a group code requirement and communication is all going to be encrypted. So this is going to prevent a malicious copy of Warpinator from pretending to be someone else on the network and initiate transfers. Um, so people who just want to share, okay, we're going to skip that paragraph. Preparation for future potential bugs or security issues, changes are being implemented to completely isolate Warpinator from the file system, make it technically unable to write anywhere else other than an incoming folder. And then, of course, you uh, work with that folder in between. And um, basically, they want to do this to make it a better option for a good corporate file sharing system, which lo works on a, on a local area network instead of, you know, across the internet, like, you know, onion share or uh, something like that. Uh, so that's what the Linux Mint team has been up to. I think just mostly some, some good compatibility issues, faster thumbnail stuff, and everything else I've been doing is fixing their servers. So if you've had some issues with Linux Mint, uh, particularly in upgrading and stuff like that over the last uh, few weeks or so, that's probably because of the server downtime uh, from patching the servers, but um, that should all be up and ready to go. So that is what the Linux Mint team is up to. I know I cannot always wait for the new release versions of Linux Mint. This one will be set up in June, so probably expect somewhere around May-ish or so we'll see a beta drop. Uh, depending on when it's going to be, it could be as, as late as early June. You'll see the beta drop around then. We'll get some good testing going, and then usually they have a good track record of a week or two after the beta drops is when the official release is going to be. So uh, I can't wait for seeing some of these changes in here, and uh, we'll bring you more news and updates when that time Time comes. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.